Hello, this is Nathan on Shuffle, and welcome to the next episode of Top 5, the weekly show we do every Tuesday where I take a topic in progressive rock or music in general and give a top five list of the things that come to my head. My wife is the one who's generating these ideas, and she gives them to me, and I go ahead and film based on what I've what I can come up with off the top of my head. So, and I encourage you guys to also come up with your list. Let me know in the comments what your top five would be for this particular topic. And I'd love to hear from you. So let's dive into the top five of this week. So today we're talking about the top five prog supergroups. So of course a prog supergroup is a group of musicians made from other bands. They come together and form a new group. Uh, and there's been several of these in the prog genre, both in the classic 70s period all the way up till now. And so this is my top five list. This isn't definitive. This is just my preferences based on what I've heard from these groups. And so coming in at number five is the group Asia. This features Jeff Downs from Yes uh, and Buggles, John Wetton from King Crimson, Uriah Heep in UK, Steve Howe from Yes, and Carl Palmer from Emerson, Lake and Palmer, of course. Uh, a great group of musicians, all really strong members of the progressive community, very highly regarded. Uh, I put this at the bottom of the list, though, because even though it's a notable progressive rock supergroup, they tended to do a more 80s style AOR type thing in their albums that came out. So it wasn't very progressive, uh, and which was surprising based on the pedigree of this list of musicians, but I think it's indicative of the time that the albums came out where everything in the music industry was moving away from progressive rock and into this more 80s style pop music that all these bands were getting into more so and so it really has that style to it which doesn't mean it's bad it just means when i'm talking about prog supergroups, this isn't as progressive as some of the other groups that i'm mentioning on the list so it comes in at number five but at number four i'm picking a more recent uh progressive super group this is liquid tension experiment that features mike portnoy and john petrucci from dream theater jordan rudess who is now in dream theater but at the time the group formed was part of i think he played with dixie dregs and did a couple other things in the prog world and then we've got Tony Levin, who's played with King Crimson, Peter Gabriel, all sorts of things, a notable stalwart in the prog community as well. And they came together and formed this instrumental group of musicians that was really great group that I've really enjoyed. They have three albums that have come out. Uh, their latest came out just last year. Uh, somewhat of a reunion because their first two albums came out way back in the earlier 2000s or nine, late 90s. I, I'm, uh, I'm trying to remember, but... Uh, really great, interesting, progressive rock, progressive metal, everything melded into that style. Just really an expression of virtuosity. They're all incredible instrumentalists, some of the best in the business. And so the music is just really great and fun to listen to. And it's a great group that has formed their own identity, even though several of them are in dream theater. So it almost feels like an instrumental dream theater project. I think there's enough variation and variety to set it apart as its own super group. So really a great great band there. Number three on my list is UK, which of course features Eddie Jobson from Curved Air and Rocky Sea Music, John Wetton again from King Crimson and Uriah Heep, Alan Holdsworth from Gong and Soft Machine, and Bill Bruford from Yes, King Crimson. Uh, UK, once again, similar, to, they came out a little bit around a similar time as Asia, a little bit before that, I believe, in the late 70s. So this, again, was when progressive rock was going out of style, and the music industry was moving away from it into a, a different sort of musical landscape. But unlike Asia, I feel like they really still embraced their prog roots and created a pair of albums that were really progressive in spirit and really incredible. Their self-titled debut is, to, to me, one of the classic albums in prog that is an essential part of any progressive rock collection, I would say. Uh, in the Dead of Night is just such a classic progressive epic that has several sections and parts to it that starts the album, but it's just an incredible expression. There's a lot of cool stuff that the band is able to do, these really great instrumentalists and virtuosos coming together to perform this really exciting and interesting music that retains that progressive spirit while still maybe moving a bit into a late 70s, 80s musical aesthetic away from that prog music, but it's really fantastic music that 
uh, really deserves to be heard and should be along the lines of the yeses and genesis of the world as one of those great classic lineups that really should be heard and their albums should be considered in the canon of great progressive music. At number two, I've got ELP, uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Keith Emerson, Greg Lake, Carl Palmer. Uh, to me, the prototype of, of the first big prog super group, right? And, and really, when determining this list, I almost don't think of them as a prog super group because they form such an identity on their own as just their own band. Because sometimes I think of a prog super group as more of a project that comes together every so often that brings together these musicians you normally wouldn't see. But ELP formed uh, with these stalwarts from these different groups, but then formed their own band that was almost bigger than the bands that they came from originally. So uh, really it's hard to classify them the same way, but whatever you classify it as, ELP is an incredible group who had an incredible run of records, especially in the 70s with Brain Salad Surgery and Tarkus and Trilogy, all these great classic albums that really established them as stalwarts of the prog genre. And I think... It's interesting. They're a trio, but each one of them is a virtuoso on their mu on their instrument. So you get this really great uh, technical playing. Really, of course, one of the highlights is the keyboard playing from from Keith Emerson, which is really you know displays all these fireworks. And even when he played live, he did so many different crazy antics on stage just to showcase his chops. You get a little bit of the classical influence coming in because of his background. Carl Palmer has some great uh, drumming that really boosts things up to an incredible level. It's just a really cool three-piece of incredible musicianship that really made a mark on the progressive genre and became one of the biggest, best, most important bands for the genre. So they have to be recognized. But my number one, maybe predictably if you know me and my channel, is Transatlantic. Uh, this is my favorite prog supergroup. Uh, this is Neil Morse, of course, who's ex-Foxbeard and, of course, continues on to his own solo career and playing with Neil Morse Band. Mike Portnoy, as mentioned before, in Liquid Tension Experiment and Extreme Theater, um, now plays in a million different projects. Uh, Pete Trawavis from Marillion and Royna Stolt from the Flower Kings. Uh, to me, this was a dream team of artists who come from all of my favorite groups. This was really where the new progressive rock interest started for me. I, I heard the progressive rock my dad showed me, the yeses and the genesises of the world. Uh, I wanted to find something more modern that scratched that same itch, and I came across Transatlantic, which allowed me to branch out into the separate members and their disparate prog groups as well, uh, and sparked a whole obsession with prog music. Uh, I really love all of their albums, uh, starting with SMPTE or SMPTE, uh, then moving towards uh, Bridge Across Forever, The Whirlwind, which was sort of a reunion album after a long hiatus. They did Kaleidoscope, and recently The Absolute Universe, which is this mega uh, double album. There, there's multiple versions of the album, so they really went all out. Um, and it may be their last album. They've teased a little bit that they may be done as a group after their latest tour, but you never know. They may reunite or come back together some point in the future. I hope so, at least. But if they don't, they've really left an indelible mark on the progressive rock genre. They're just an incredible group that has really personified the, the new wave of progressive rock music that has been around since late 90s up till now. So they've really been so important to the style of music that's been important to me as a music fan for all these past 20 years or so. So those are my favorite supergroups. Let me know in the comments what your favorite prog supergroups are, the ones that I may have missed that you really love. Or would you order these way different than I did? This is just my opinions. Nothing definitive or set in stone. Hopefully you'll appreciate that and that this will spark some additional discussion and debate. So thank you guys so much for your participation in the channel. And I look forward to your comments and all of the interaction below. So thank you guys. Enjoy the music. I'll see you in the next top five. Bye.